ladies and gentlemen, this is the Angel of Death, John Rare, back for another show. And tonight we have the owner, operator, promoter of one of the most controversial promotions here in the South, maybe in the entire United States. Welcome, Kevin Brandon. Hey, what's going on, John? Well, we see that it's finally been announced, Carnage Cup 12. Yeah, finally, man. Uh, it's been a while. And everybody's been wanting it since the well, last one's uh, 2017. So, yeah, you know how it's been, man. You know, uh, it's been uh, it's been a lot of work trying to get it going. And then, uh, well, we had one problem after another trying to get a uh, trying to get a carnage cup lined up, and then. Well, and then also I admit that I went through a period of time where I, I just kind of uh, like wasn't wasn't interested in it for a while. I kind of took a, a sabbatical where I just had kind of burned out. This combination of uh, years of doing them, and then but also all the headache trying to you know get another place to do it, and then. Uh, and in my opinion, I mean, I think, I think we peaked like so far. We peaked at a uh, Carnage Cup ten. Um, I think I don't think eleven was as good as ten. And so I think what it was when we did ten, it was so damn good that the uh, the expectations were so fucking high. And then we come into eleven. I was thinking, man. This shit right here is going to be showing up, I mean, crazy as fuck, you know. And then it come down, it just, to my my opinion, I'm not, when I say that, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to knock the guys, I'm not knocking the guys, uh, anybody personally. I'm just saying as a show, top to bottom, it, it wasn't. Um, to me, it wasn't as good as Carnage Cup 10. I think 10 was was pretty much the uh, measuring stick, you know. And so, um, I guess once 11 didn't quite live up to the hype, and then we couldn't go back to the campgrounds, um, I, I kind of lost the interest for a little while. And then, you know, it was probably, shit, probably three or four different times where uh, I tried to come back and was gonna try to run it, and shit, shit kept ha shit kept happening, and we kept having trouble. Uh, and then the COVID hit. The COVID hit last year, cause like remember, remember me and you talked, and we said, okay, finally, 2020, that's it. We're fucking doing it right. And then the fucking COVID hit, and then it knocked us out for another damn year. So. I'm sorry I didn't mean to take over the show, man. I just kind of went on that little, that little spiel, that little introduction deal right there. Yeah, you you uh, you took us on a well needed uh, history of what's happened in the last few, you know, uh, shows. And yeah, because you even remember that I I even made that little promo at the end of one of my DVDs about Carnage Cup coming back in 2020. And then you know, obviously, COVID fucked up a lot of plans. Deep South was actually getting to go, getting hot again, and then COVID came in, fucked a lot of shit up for us, but we're, uh, yeah, uh, yeah man, let me mention, and you know, technically speaking, later in the year, there were some promotions that still ran their deathmatch tournaments, but if you go back and look, they were not a success, and so, people was talking to me, they was like, we'll try to do it like late 20, and I'm like, you know, I didn't want to do it because I'd seen some other tournaments. I'm like, you know, travel isn't opened up. Yeah. And yeah, we could if we would have wanted to and maybe pushed it. We possibly could have did something, you know, around, you know, the end of last year. But uh, my thing is, is I, I felt like it would not be the success. And I, like I was telling you, coming off of 11 which was a little bit of a downer compared to 10. Now, there was still a lot of guys, man, that did a tremendous job. Don't get me wrong, but 
I don't know whether it was because it was one day or whether, you know, the, uh, uh, shit, I don't know whether, it just, everything didn't, didn't go, didn't mesh well. I mean, maybe if we'd have broken into two days, it, it would have helped out. I'm not saying it, I still don't think it would have top ten, but, uh, anyway, I, I got off the subject, but, uh, so, my thing was, when we got to, uh, this year, when we, the first of this year, I said, we finally gonna have to fucking break down and, and do it, you know. Well, you, uh, yeah, you broke down, you announced it, and you've announced, uh, is it seven participants so far? Uh, yeah, right now, we've got, uh, seven participants announced, and then we announced the return of the infamous Deathmatch Gauntlet, which we introduced at Carnage Cup 11, which I've had so many people tell me that one of the highlights of Carnage Cup 11 um, was the Deathmatch Gauntlet, that people still, you know, it's, just, it's been four years, it's been four years, and people still talking about that Deathmatch Gauntlet, the the only thing that uh, didn't get over, the only thing people shit on in that is uh, Christian Cross. I get, I get a lot of, I get a lot of people say, "Look, man, the gauntlet is an awesome idea. Nobody's doing it, you know, as part of a tournament. Nobody, nobody has a gauntlet. Nobody come up with that, you know. We was the first ones to do it in a tournament. Now, there's been deathmatch gauntlets before." But we actually had it incorporated in the actual Cornish Cup tournament, the same as this one at Cornish Cup 12. It will be a first-round match. It will be multiple guys, two at a time, but it will be a first-round match. The winner advances on to the semifinals. So the winner of that one was also has already been announced for this one, and that's our uh, favorite Mexican friend, Chewy Martinez. Yeah, yeah, we've got Chewy, we've got Chewy Martinez uh, coming in here. He, uh, he's been around, he actually, he did a non-tournament match back at the second Carnage Cup back in 06. Uh, Chewy was actually green back then, I think. And so, you know, we got Chewy, you know, we got Neil Diamond Cutter, um, let's see who we got. What, but who did we announce next? Uh, Raven Havoc is three. Um, oh shit! What Blaine Evans, uh, Jay Blade, and then who? Who else do we help me a little bit? And I'm fucking uh, losing my losing your mind again. Yeah. Who? Who else do we announce? Uh, let's see. Who's? Yeah, we're missing one here. Uh... <laughs> Bloody hell. Well, I know you announced Larry Legend is going to be the announcer, correct? Yeah, Larry Legend, he was former uh, CZW announcer, uh, former Ring of Honor announcer, um, former GCW announcer, and now current ICW announcer, Larry Legend. So, yeah, you got Larry Legend on there. Uh, let, me, let me pull this. Uh, you're supposed to have some notes, John. What's wrong with you, man? Man, see, what the the problem is, is like, I've been doing some other stuff. I won't even lie. And I've been kicked off Facebook. So, you know, you know that. I told you that. All right, let, let, here we go, man. All right, first, the first seven are Chewy Martinez, Neil Diamond Cutter, yourself, yeah, we didn't announce me. What the? That's why I, I know you've been drinking already. Uh, Raven Havy, Blaine Evans, Aiden Blackheart. Oh yeah, and Jay, and Jay Blake. So, and, hey. and and I and I'm gonna go ahead. I interrupted you. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a, a fucking uh, bombshell tonight. Uh, the first participant in the Deathmatch Gauntlet is gonna get a lot of controversy. Because a lot, some people don't like this guy. He reached out to me. I figure I know what the guy's willing to do, and he's gonna. I mean, he's bringing himself out here. You know, it's a different scenario. I know a lot of guys fly to California and work him, 
but he's coming to Carnage Cup, the first first participant for the Death Match Gauntlet first round is Mr. California. What the hell? <laughs> Mr. California, yeah, we're gonna drop that on us tonight, man. Yeah, so so yeah, uh and then, like I said, but you know, like I do, controversy always follows Carnage Cup. So I said, man, we got to do something controversial. And so uh, California hit me up, man. He said, look, man, I'll, I'll come out there. You know, I just, you know, and he basically, he basically told me a deal. He's like, man, he said, I couldn't refuse. I'm like, well, I mean, if you, if you, you know, come out here, man, from California, I'll, I put you on it, so you know. But like I said, I, was, I said I'm gonna put you in that gauntlet though, because you, you know, first of all, you're gonna get heat from some people, and secondly, you ain't that, you've never been on a carnage cut. So I'm gonna put you in the gauntlet. If you prove yourself in that, then we'll, we'll go from there. So that that's what we're gonna do. Well, the gauntlet definitely has been you know done one time, and it was you know like you said, it was a huge success. Christian Cross, you know. Obviously, brought his own heat to the show like he always does, but well, that's that's what I'm saying. See, Cross, he had the heat in the first one, and I'm like, dude, we got to keep some heat going, and who better to put in that fucking gauntlet than fucking Mr. California? And so now everybody's gonna be that's what everybody's gonna be talking about. So they're gonna be like, God dang, I can't believe that they got him and this motherfucker bad, but uh. That California, but he, he's a crazy man. Like, my whole deal is, I mean, some guys say that when they go work for him, that they have, sometimes they have bad experiences and sometimes that they're good. And I was like, well, this is different because I ain't working for him. He's going to work for me. So it's a whole different scenario. It's not the same deal. You know, no, none of the guys are working for him. He, he's working for us. Yeah. So it's a whole thing. So whatever you think about him, if he's got what it takes, we'll see what he's got in that gauntlet, and then, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, you know. But uh, we got to have, we can't have another situation like what happened in the first gauntlet. So we, you know, I'm, I'm going to be particular about who I got in this thing. But the gauntlet is pretty much for guys who are coming in to Carnage Cup for the first time or they're new to the deathmatch scene. You know, or they, they're guy, young, up-and-coming guys and they're hungry and wanting to prove themselves. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. And so if you prove yourself in the gauntlet, then next year you might not be in the gauntlet again. So it just depends. And it's another way for us to showcase more talent on the show without having to have 25 fucking matches. And then, too, like you said, it's infinite. I mean, we did it. It got over. I mean, it's different. I mean, because you used to just see it all fucking singles matches. Was, and, and this is, man, you know, the first one, man, it went like like an hour. Yeah. It may have been longer. It may have been over an hour. You know? And uh, <laughs> has there been any match stipulations announced yet? Um... Let's see. No, no, not not as of yet. We we're the match stipulations are keeping under wraps. I'm not I'm not I'm not releasing any like I talked to Tyler Becker, which Tyler Becker is pretty much he's my partner now. He he's pretty much my second guy in in, in charge. And he's 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 in charge of the weapons. You know, he's in charge of, you know, uh Shot calling in the locker room. I told him, man, I'm, I'm grooming him so that one day, you know, if I get too get tired of fucking with it, I, you know, I said, look, man, you know, he knows he knows like what I want to see, and so I'm basically grooming him for like, you know, you know, wanting to, my second guy, you know, and so anyway, I, I've discussed it with him, and then you and I have spoken about a particular match that we working on and I don't I don't want to release none of that shit like the only thing I can say fan, the uh, gauntlet will be a fan bring the weapons um I think we're gonna have a uh let's see uh 
probably a deep south circus net of some kind. I, I can throw that out there because the circus net's been done before. Um, I think like a deep house, deep deep south uh, fun house, death match. I think Tyler was talking about that. I don't even really know what all that encompasses. I just I remember he had an idea for a deep south fun house death match, and I really don't know what it's going to be. Um, I know we're working on a, without giving away the whole thing, we're working on a barefoot match. Right now, we're working on the sickest fucking barefoot match ever. Like, the shit that's going to be in there is going to blow everybody's fucking mind. And I've got two guys that, that are going to do it, willing to do it, that are going to fucking pro- probably be the sickest barefoot match of all time. I mean, just, uh, on paper, it just sounds, it's just fucking ridiculous. Um, the finals, um, I don't know for certain. I, I wouldn't give it away if I could. I do know uh, we've got something planned that's never been done. Uh, specifically in this way, like, it's, to the best of my knowledge, it's never been done. A finals has never been done quite like what we want to do. Um, I know it's going to involve a shitload of glass, but uh, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to include. Uh, uh, I'm not going to just let it out. The other can't out bang. I'm because. Obviously, there's plenty of tournaments 29 October, and, and people be like, oh man, we heard this shit, fuck it, we're going to do it first, and I figure, so I'll drop little hints and say shitload of glass, but you don't know what's going to be set up, barefoot, but I mean, I'm not going to say what the fuck's going to be in there, no. and, or, or who's in, um, I know, uh, last I talked to Tyler, he was working on a lot of panes of glass, which is something that we've not ever had large quantities of. I've always, I've always been a fan of the panes of glass. We just uh, have never had them because they're, they're they're very expensive. Unless you just look up and find them on fucking Craigslist, or you find somebody getting rid of them or something, they they're hard to get. But uh, but I, what I understand though, he's already got some, and I know we're gonna have uh, panes of glass, a plenty. Uh, the razor wire will be there. There ain't gonna be no corners killed by that razor wire. Um, I understand you said, now John, let me ask you, is this, is this for sure, are you 100% you don't think you'll change your mind? This is, you think this, this is the, this is it for you? Is this the, like, is this your last Cornish Cup? Yeah. Definitely 100%, 100% or... Is there ever a chance you'd come back down the road or what? You know, I, you never know what's going to happen. But, you know, like I said, my MRI is actually this Friday. Because, you know, I actually thought it was last Friday and I got confused again. Too many concussions. But uh, once I once I see what this MRI foretells, we'll see where, where, where we're going. As you know, I have not been in good health in the last few months. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm... I'm concerned, I'm concerned about it, man, because, yeah, I mean, I, see, it's kind of, it's a hard thing, man, because on one hand, you know, you don't want your health to go down, you want, you want to try to keep your health uh, as good as you can for as long as you can, but then on the other hand, I know that itch, you know, or that wrestling bug or whatever the fuck you call it, I know that it's hard to get rid of that too, but. I told you, I think I told you last time, I, can't, I believe it was at, uh, uh, what was it? it, it was at, uh, I think it was, when, it, I, I believe it was when you rise from Peter B. Beautiful, I can't remember, but I, 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 I want to say I told you uh, somewhere around that time, I said if you do Carnage Cup 12, I want to ask you to do another one, but. Yep, you said that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so, with. You know, I mean, now, I mean, if you have your MRI and they say it's not that bad, but I mean, if they say it's bad, I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah, it, there's no way. But I mean, 
I mean, it all just depends on what they say. But I mean, you know, but even still, I'm just going to try to just just keep to that and say, all right, I, you know, and just say, look, 12 is going to be John's last one. And then, and then you come to me if you want to. If you ever want to do another one, you just come to me. And then we just have to move on with the next generation of guys. And, uh, but I still want you around in some capacity. I mean, if nothing else, uh, doing commentary or refereeing or managing or something, you know, talking staying about, around. Talking about commentary, you also have Chris Kloss coming back for this Carnage Cup, correct? Yeah, I got uh, Chris Kloss and uh, Nathan Hamilton coming in uh, for this Carnage Cup. And uh, they actually, you know, they did it at 10. Yeah. Which I, I think Klaus is good look, man. Cause you know we brought Klaus in on ten, and that that ended up being. This is my opinion. I, I think Cornish Cup ten was our crowning glory. I, I think Cornish Cup ten was was the best one. Um, just my own personal opinion. And uh, but but I will say, if we ever had a chance to 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 match it or even excel beyond it, I think that on paper, I think 12, because I mean, I know the rest of the lineup, and I know some of the crazy shit we got playing. I think that we have an opportunity with 12 to surpass 10. 11 won't be no problem. Now, now when I mentioned 11, I should have mentioned, now, one of the things I know that... Uh, let down a little bit is you and Spider, y'all were both injured. Um, and and we, if I had it to do over again, we probably would have just had y'all have one match. Because I think if y'all had just had one match, uh, y'all could have probably did, just went out there and just fucking went all out. But the two out of three gimmick, I guess, was probably too much, man. Because, you know, I... Now, I think at the time, though, Spider was probably more... Would you say Spider was more banged up than you were at the time? Yeah, because, you we're, know... We're talking about four years ago. Yeah, because, you know, my uh, my injuries, you know, didn't come till after that. But, you know, he he got... We both got hurt in the very first match that day. And, you know, it just went downhill from there. Yeah, would you say that, that you and him getting hurt... Uh, Probably played uh, played a uh, played a role or played a uh, it, it kind of impacted the show. Do you think if you could have you do you think that uh, if y'all hadn't got hurt, I mean at least uh, between the two of you, y'all could have pulled y'all's weight and the show would have been better. Yeah, I mean yeah, yeah you, you, we, you know people still meld in some of their performances that day, but you know. What what do you think your opinion? I know you're supposed to be interviewing me, but I guess it don't matter. We can just we just call this a discussion because when me and you call it, we just pretty much discussion anyway. What in your opinion would you would you agree though? Do you do you do you feel like do you feel like eleven was a little bit of a letdown compared to ten? Yeah, I mean ten was you know just packed from front to back both days. You know the. The people that was on there, and you know, the the thing about that is like the performances on 10 was like every match was, you know, could have been a candidate for match of the night, and 11 just wasn't like that. Yeah, what do, what do you think are the reasons why 11 didn't live up to the hype or the expectation? Maybe it just had to follow too hard of a Carnage Cup. And then, like I said, when some of the people meld in their performances, you know, it just did and, or, you know, just didn't use the weapons and, you know, shit like that. It just made it look worse. Or it didn't live up to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's, I'm not, you know, I'm not going, I'm not going to mention any names, but, um, I will say that people are going to look at the lineup for 12 and they're going to say, well, it's, 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 it's different lineup. You know, it's different, it's different guys for the most part. Um, and I'll say, I'll, I'll put this lineup against any other lineup because in my opinion, the lineup we got, we got for 12 
to me, I feel more confident about than I did about 11. And, and people are going to have a hard time, you know, swallowing that. And because if you look at it, it it's, it's heavy, heavy on the Southern talent. You know, and there's not a lot of there's not a lot of GCW, ICW talent. And people are gonna say, you know, you got anything against certain people? And I said, no. I mean, you know, not personally, but I will say that when um, when certain guys come down from up north and they come down here, uh, they don't perform on the same level that they do when they're back in their home promotions in, in the Northeast or the Midwest or something. So, some guys, I mean, I mean, I would, I mean, I don't know, and, and, you know, you don't know, you don't know what anybody's going to do to you, book them. And so, but, you know, but there are a good number of guys that I have a lot of confidence in and I feel like I know uh, what they're going to do. And, now, there are a lot of new guys this year that haven't worked the Carnage Cup, but I've seen a good deal of the work, and I feel very confident. And I'll say this year we've got more hungry guys. we got more guys that are hungry, that are not on the bigger tournaments. And that's, that's, what, that's another thing Carnage Cup excels at. We are the tournament that discovers new talent. Yeah. We, we are the tournament because you look, I mean, you, it's a damn laundry list of names that we've discovered that ends up uh, going big time in these bigger promotions. And so where we usually, where we excel the best is when we book, you know, hungry guys that hadn't made, you know, went on and made the bigger name at the, at the bigger promotions or the, one of the more, the, the more popular, I wouldn't say bigger, because Carnage Cup is, is is one of the big three. I mean, we're one of the big fucking three, period. And there ain't no, there's no doubt about it. At this point, Carnage Cup is one of the, pre, we are a premier tournament in the United States. I don't give a damn, you can like us or you can fucking hate us. We are one of the premier tournaments. Period. It, period. It, 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 nobody can fucking dispute it. I mean, we were the first one to do Razor Wire. We were the first one to have our own documentary. Yes, that is right. Fucking CZW didn't have their documentary from Bass till a year later. Hard, the Hard Way documentary that come out is two, two or three years later. We did ours back in 2015. We were the first fucking promotion to do a documentary. I mean, we, we were the first that all this shit. We were the gimmicks. We were the first to do shit and ain't nobody fucking did in the United States. Well, I definitely want to send a good shout out to two really good deathmatch groups. Uh, deathmatch Elite and Deathmatch Empire for letting me share all the Carnage Cup information, you know, anytime that I woke. So definitely hit those up on Facebook. Hey man, let me let me shout out to uh, to old Corey Deathmatch Worldwide for all your t-shirt needs. If you want uh, if you want to get your t-shirts out there and where the public can buy them, I highly recommend uh, it's Deathmatch Worldwide. Uh, we just opened. I just got two stores opened up on there. We've got one for IWA Deep South, and we got one for Boris Dookie. Um, Corey's a great guy. He's out of Kentucky. Um, I highly recommend doing business with him. Uh, then uh, I haven't got it confirmed yet, but I'm trying. I'm in in the works of trying to do business with uh, Deathmatch and Love Letter, which is actually the the first and only American Deathmatch magazine. Uh, I'm working on trying to get them at Cornish Cup. Um, Corey's actually going to try to bring the, the shirts. He's actually going to try to come as well. Um, we got Drew Chaos going to come in and do uh, pictures. And then, hell, we ain't even talked about this shit. But, hell, for the first time ever, Cornish Cup 12 
will be live on pay-per-view on Fight TV, the number one uh, streaming pay-per-view channel for professional wrestling, MMA boxing in the world right now. So we're actually going to be live two days for all the carnage uh, on October 9th and 10th. So that's another huge fucking step for us. So, uh, man, I mean, it's in terms of prestige, this Carnage Cup is going to uh, surpass all the, all the previous ones. And uh, I'm still working on some other shit. I hadn't got locked down, like I said, with the, the, the magazine. But uh, there's another thing I'm working on, too, but I don't know if it's going to happen. But anyway, if, if, we didn't, if we didn't lock down anything else... This one's already, got, in my opinion, this one's got the potential to be the, the death match tournament of the year candidate. And, and, I mean, we'll see. Now but you, I, I, think, I think it's got the potential to be. Now, you also have a special feature match with two ladies, correct? Um, yeah, actually, on, uh, yeah, on Sunday, non-tournament, we have uh, Chewy, Chewy Martinez, his his lady friend, um, uh, Ms. Fat, Ms. Fat, I think I'm saying that right, uh, versus uh, Melanie Monroe in uh, actually a boxing match. It's going to be five, uh, five one-minute rounds. I actually talked to a guy, a guy that's uh, in the boxing. He, he recommended amateur for especially for ladies, do one-minute rounds. And so we're going to do, or they're going to do five one-minute rounds of uh, boxing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, looking forward. That's kind of different. I mean, we hadn't really had done that yet. We're kind of venturing out. We, we're we venturing out into, into other things. We introduced the uh, slap fighting back uh, last summer at Shit Apocalypse. And we've been having some really good fun with the uh, slap fights, so now we're we're breaking over into the the boxing now too. So uh, that one is going to be good. Um, and yeah, let's see. Yeah, we've got some surprises. Uh, we've got I know we've got one thing we can't really announce yet. Uh, and then there's one there's I know there's one one match I, it's actually not even going to be announced at all. Um, but I, I don't, I don't tell, I can tell you about it. But anyway, uh, yeah, so, man, I mean, it's shaping up, man. Uh, the, we never did go over the, the, the bracket or whatever. I know the the original field is like 30, it's 13 guys, and then there's like six or seven in the gauntlet. Now, all of these guys are, are tournament participants because, like I said, the gauntlet is a tournament match, but they're... Uh, it's going to be like the 2006. The 13th man is going to draw a bye to the semis, and then the other 12 are going to be paired up into six singles matches. Singles matches, and then the gauntlet is, I think last I looked, is seven guys in the gauntlet. So we're going to have seven matches on Saturday. The Sunday, there'll be four singles matches in the semifinals. Then the finals will be a four-way elimination. Then, uh, in addition to that, we're gonna have, I think, uh, I think three non-tournament matches. I, yeah, I think, I think three non-tournament matches total, three or four. I can't remember. But uh, uh, the another, let's see, another one we're doing is actually, I think, the old Sunday. No, okay, let me see. I'm trying to think. No, no, that's all I can tell you. I can't. I'm sorry, John. I can't. I can't fucking say nothing else. <laughs> I, was, I, was about, I was about to spill some damn secrets, man. But I, I better just stop right there. I've been saying too much. Well, do you want to leave the fans with anything before we go? We've already. We don't need you spilling too much shit here. Oh, uh, let me see here. Oh yeah. Well, we can go ahead and drop. Uh, we can go ahead and drop a couple of more names in the gauntlet, uh, which I, I announced the first one's Mr. California. Um, and then the second ones are going to be Hardcore Hillbilly. Hardcore Hillbilly, the former slap fight champion? Yeah, we'll have him. Uh, then there's a young guy 
from, uh, I think he's from Louisville. He, now, when you see this guy, you don't know him. His name's Chet Ripley, but this guy reminds me of a teenage Necro Butcher. If you see him and you remember Necro, like when he first started out, he had the long hair, but he was bald on top and then had the full beard. Yeah. Th- this kid looks just like, he looks like a 19 or 20 year old Necro Butcher. Like if Necro was like 19 or 20, I, I, he's, he's a little guy, but in the face, he's got the same hair and the same beard as Necro, and and he takes really huge bumps. He's going to be in the uh, the gauntlet. Well, fuck it, I'll go ahead and announce more. Uh, little Sicko, which is the son of uh, Sicko the Clown that passed some years ago, he's going to be in the gauntlet, and then another local guy. I don't know if you know this guy, Jamie Richards. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah, the, I know the name now. I, I can't put a face to it, but I've heard the name. Yeah, Jamie Richards is going to be in it, and then uh, I think Ra- uh, Raider Rock's going to be in it, and I think one more. How many is that? That's California, Hillbilly, uh, California, Hillbilly, Chet Ripley's three. Sicko's four, Jamie Richards is five, and Raider Rock. And that's it. I think it's six. I think it's six guys. Yeah, so I think that's I think that's the gauntlet. So yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and just spill those tonight. So if you listen to the show tonight, you'll know who's in the gauntlet. So that that's going to be a very interesting match. And the gauntlet is nothing to be ashamed of, guys. The gauntlet is. A very interesting match, and it's a good way for young talent or guys that hadn't been on the Carnage Cup to get to showcase what they got. And then so it's and it's a legitimate first round match. Everybody, I've had some people ask me, "Was well, it a first round match?" Is it? It's not time. I said, "No, it's it's a first round match. It's just as important as a single." Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's just as important. So yeah, there is no, it's no. Uh, no shame in doing the gauntlet, you know, at all. Oh, and uh, Tyler Tyler Graves. I forgot. Yeah, Tyler Graves is in the gauntlet also. That motherfucker. Yeah, Tyler Graves, formerly Cody McCulley. I forgot. Yeah, he, he's number seven. I forgot. You're to- Tyler Graves. That's, I, knew, I knew I was leaving somebody out. It's Tyler Graves. Yeah. Tyler Graves also being in the gauntlet. Well, so, you yeah. know, this is just my opinion. Out of the people that you named... I, I personally got to go with uh, Tyler as the winner because he always cheats for one thing. He tried to cheat with me, if you remember, and that fucked him up because I beat his ass. Yeah, man, matter of fact, I mean, that, uh, in my opinion, my opinion, uh, since Spider, that match you had at Wayne's with uh, Tyler was probably the best match you've had since, uh, oh, shit, probably since Spider. You, you and Tyler had a hell of a match, man. Yeah, Tyler, he did, he did awesome on that, man. That was, uh, it was a kick-ass, uh, it was a kick-ass it, match. Don't you think that's one of your top matches, one of your best matches? Yeah, since, yeah, since, uh... For a long time, yeah. Now, I, I I enjoyed me and Jeff hard. I really did. I thought me and Jeff's was fucking over the top. Oh, yeah. It was hot. It, it definitely was hot. <laughs> yeah, fire everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And and for all, for those people that shit on Jeff, be honest. I, Jeff, here's what you got to look at. Jeff, as an old school uh, heel... Jeff really can work, dude, because, like, I've watched that match several times, and Jeff was working the heel. I mean, Jeff knows how to get heat, and he knows how to work an old-school match, if you notice. I mean, he'll get a little hardcore. He won't go as crazy as you, but, I mean, he'll, uh, he know he knows how to make the crowd pissed off, and he, and he knows how to be bad, and... That's why you gotta look at Jeff in the proper context. A lot of people talk about him, but Jeff's my buddy, man. I love Jeff. You know, he's just few guys. He's just few guys that I consider like brothers. I mean, you and Jeff are two of my favorite people. Tyler Becker is. He's 
I'd say you, you Jeff and Tyler is probably my three favorite damn guys. Honestly. And then Chewy, I, yeah, and then Chewy, I don't get to see Chewy much, but Chewy, you know, I love Chewy to death too, you know. So, but of, of guys I, I see or talk to, you, you Jeff and uh, Tyler, me and Tyler have been getting pretty close now since hey, I've been uh, showing him the ropes on the management, getting him involved with the behind the scenes and the and the running and running shit. Me and him, me and him talks every damn day. So, but uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, I heard I got to check with him, man. I heard fucking Jeff's gonna be retiring soon too, and I, I really, I'm really gonna fucking cry, man, because. And I'd hate to lose you and Jeff both. I mean, right, right, close together like that. So I'm hoping that Jeff will stay around a little while. But I hadn't talked to him lately, so I ain't sure. I know this, like from the talent that I've seen here in the South, just over the last you know year or so, is I think you're in good hands. You just gotta you gotta utilize that Southern talent. Yeah, and that's what I did. That's what I'm saying. This is the damn Carnage Cup 12 is, you know, we, now we've got some guys that aren't quote-unquote Southern, but they're, they're guys that, you know, that are hungry guys. But if you look at the lineup, it's predominantly Southern guys. And I booked it that way on purpose. And, you know, some people, like I said, some of the fans from other places, might give me shit because I ain't got enough guys from fucking northeast or at north, at north or but, but see, look, dude, I that just that ain't the way I roll, man. I just I, I don't roll that way no more. I, I like booking. I like booking predominantly southern guys. That's the way I, I am. That's the way I learned the fucking hard way. I learned the hard way that that's the, you know we're, 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 we live here. We need to utilize our talent first, and then. Sprinkle in a few guys that are hungry, that we that we feel confident in, and, and have a hell of a damn tournament. And and here's the thing: why the fuck do you want to come to Georgia and see guys from fucking New Jersey and New York? It don't make no damn sense. I want to see motherfuckers that live in Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, the Carolinas, which we got uh, J. W. Dalton and uh, Raven Havoc from the Carolinas. And uh, got Tristan Ramsey from Tennessee. You know, got uh, Blaine and Jay Blade and Sicko and Jamie Richards from Alabama. J- John Rare from Alabama. I want to see Southern guys, man. It's fucking in the South. You know, uh, you know, if you got maybe maybe one or two guys, or a couple of guys outside the South, that's fine. If the guys ain't been noticed, they hungry and shit. And they really want to be here, and it's not just another fucking tournament. Yeah, I give them a chance. I mean, yeah, it's but, a, but you know, if it's just another fucking booking, no, fuck it. I'm not. I'm not booking. I mean, it's I'm like uh, it's it's like you know, it don't make sense to have the word southern in your tournament, and you do the tournament up north with no southern talent in there. Well, see, there's another tournament. That's called Southern Sickness, and that's that's, that's Ian's boy. I and yeah, I call it Ian's boy. He talks shit about me. J. C. Rotten. They call her shit Southern Sickness. Well, they started out in Tennessee. Well, they got run the fuck out of Tennessee, and they moved to Indiana, where fucking Ian is. Well, now they run in, you know, like fucking middle of, the middle of Indiana. Well, I mean that ain't fucking Southern, you know. So. I mean, they need to change the name. But you know what, though? Even when they ran the first Southern Sickness, they ran it in Memphis, Tennessee. They didn't have no Southern guys. I may, maybe, maybe one, maybe one or two guys might have been from here. But I want to say though they didn't have any. Though I, I'm, I'm wanting to think that there literally were no guys from from the South on it, and it was fucking called Southern Sickness. Now, I do know this year, maybe Ray, maybe, maybe somebody from down here was on the first, but the one they just fucking had, there, there literally was not anybody from from, from any anywhere in the South. Now, why the fuck you call it Southern Sickness Cup, and you don't, and you book all Midwest and North Northeast Yankees, man. It don't make no damn sense. Now I'm not, not I'm not saying there ain't any good talent from up there. 
I'm saying, you know, I'm from here. And so guys in the area and in the neighboring states, they're going to get the shot first. You know, and if, if I've got fucking spots left and there's somebody that I want to book and they don't happen to be from down, I might fucking do it. But it, it's going to be feared for between. I mean, that's just... I mean, I, the, the other reason is I don't want to book the same talent that you see on every other fucking tournament. Every tournament, they use the same fucking guys. Yeah, over and over. Yeah, that's a that's like a weekly damn thing that I see. Same shit over and over. Yeah, it's just the same guys. And so I'm like, man, I'm saying, we're going to give you something different. And, you know, if you don't like something different, I'm sorry, but I mean, I, we're gonna we're gonna show you guys that you ain't gonna never see on ICW or GCW or these other promotions. I mean, maybe some of the guys might go to one of those places if they you know if they want to. But and and I really think that some of these guys, man, Blaine Evans, Jay Blake. I mean, some of these guys that here, I mean, in my opinion, are just as good. As the best guys in the Northeast. That's my opinion. I mean, hey, fucking Blaine and Blade can can hang with any motherfucker up there. Yeah, the, you can Here. put you can put Blaine and Jay on any one of these other guys' show, and they'll out. I, I would guarantee you they'll outperform and out wrestle any of them there. Any of them. Any of them. Uh, Raven Havoc's another good one. Uh, I don't know if you've seen one of him. Uh, uh, Tristan Ramsey from, from, I think he's from Chattanooga. I know he's from Tennessee. I think he's right, maybe around Knoxville. Uh, Tristan Ramsey, he's another uh, good Southern guy. I mean, fucking nuts, man. I mean, nuts. Uh, some of these young guys now, like Little Sicko, and I think Jamie's not, Jamie's not, Jamie's not as young as uh, Sicko, but he's not, He's not had a chance on the tournaments yet. Uh, I'm, I'm really, really uh, looking forward to seeing some of these guys from here that hadn't had to shine yet on the tournament. And so this, this tournament here, man, has really got me motivated to want to do another one. I finally like got my motivation. I finally was able to make uh, all this shit line up and, and make it all come together. And I'm telling you, man, I'm more excited about this one here. This is the first time I've probably been this excited since 10. And that was, that's been six years now. That's, that, 10 was six years ago now. So, it, it, yeah, this is the first time in a little over six years that I've really been excited about a carnage kit. But trust me, this this one here, this is the one that people ain't going to miss. I mean, yeah, I, I recommend people coming in person. If for some reason you can't, this shit will be on Fight TV and you watch it at home. But there's no excuse. Either come in person or at least order the pay-per-view. You know, help us out if you love Deathmatch Wrestling, if you love real sick shit. I mean, this is what it's going to be. And I think, I think you're promising to you're promising to give people something that, that they ain't going to never forget. you going out, so I know, you know, when you came on the scene and you did the first one back in, uh, when you know, it's, it's been 10, it's actually, it's, it, this year, this year marks 10 years ago that you debuted with Spider in the first song. Yep. So it's kind of fitting, you know, 10 years later, you know, you're hanging it up. So I know you're, you're wanting to give people something that they ain't gonna never fucking forget. Hell yeah, and I'm I'm definitely gonna leave people with something to go home to that they're gonna tell their other friends about, and I can guarantee you that nobody's gonna get kicked out of it for stupid reasons, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Kevin. Well, I appreciate it. I know the fans are going to love these big names that have been dropped tonight. And hopefully we'll be hearing more back from you soon. This was the Angel of Death, John Rare. 
sending everybody back home. And of course, don't forget to come back and watch the newest movie on genre films, The Alabama White Thing. Keep watching, my friends.